it's yeah, it's kind of what you said. It was it was a it was a long season. It was a very long season, but I think with the people within the locker room and so on, I've, we've all enjoyed it. We're obviously disappointed to not be in the next round, but unfortunately, it's just the way it was going to be this year. But as I say, throughout the whole year, we've had so many ups and downs, say on the field, off the field, but we've all worked through it together and. I say it's been one of my most enjoyable years, and I've been playing for a thousand years. It feels like. What made it one of your most enjoyable years? It was. It, this was my first full season in a completely new culture with completely new people, and I think just overall spending more time with the people in the team, uh, the staff, people around the stadium, people in the, just in the area as well. Like it's there are lots of good people here, and you know when you're doing well, you know people are really happy for you. When you're doing badly, people hope that you do well and they're not you know so much just getting on your back and so on and people are all very driven and as I say I've, I've enjoyed spending my time and working with those people well, How was the meeting that you had with the referees that broke into the language and what was the theme that came out of it? From the exit meeting yeah. Similar to what Samantha just asked me there just asking about the season to be honest um, from my own personal perspective and the team's perspective what we could do better as a team and so on and you know, we, our strengths were clear this year. We didn't really concede too many goals, but then also we'd like to have scored more goals as well. I felt like by the end of the season we were really competitive, but we just stumbled at the at the final hurdle, which is a shame. But unfortunately, that's just the way the season goes. Now we talked a couple of weeks ago about you know the strength of that defense um, or the strength of the team is that defense, and you have to be strong in one way or the other. Do you think that's the biggest um, need this off season to try and? Um, not necessarily. I think you, you could possibly bring in new pieces, but then speaking to the as a back four, uh, recently we were speaking about contributions this season. I think I've scored one. Donny Toy scored one. Marcel Silva scored two, and then that's it basically for all the defenders. So you know you can talk about bringing in people up front, but it's a team. It's a team game, isn't it? And I I, I should have scored more. So should, so should other people. It only takes maybe five or six more goals in a year. And you could be in a different situation. So they don't all necessarily have to come from a nine. You can spread that around the team, can't you? Uh, and you say the back line can score more. I mean, how do you go about doing that? I mean, Just not be terrible at like finishing, basically. That's that's the first thing. Um, I have have not been great in front of the goal this year. Justin, I think, against Philadelphia, had maybe four chances where he could have scored. Yeah, it's just, it doesn't seem like a lot in the moment. But, you know, when all things are said and done, you apply too much pressure to your front line if other people aren't going to contribute. And I think we are good enough to be in situations where we get the chance to score. And I think people like myself and so on, we just need to realise when we go up there, you know, you're not going to get 10 chances a game, so you might as well finish the one that you get. Is enough done in training to be sharp? Yeah, this, this tra training's very good. Training's very, very good. You know, it always, it always has been. And, you know, as the season progressed, it was... It, for me, like it raised level again because it was it was just slightly different. It was more specific to the teams and the end of the season running. But you know, I very rarely am I going to find myself in the box trying to score a goal in training because you know I'll be doing my defending. But we, I think we we worked on set pieces more, and I think we'll work on it again next year. And who knows? It could be a strength of ours going into the next season. Um, obviously, I'm not. I'm not saying scoring is like the be all and end all. And if we score more goals, we'll be like the greatest team ever. But it's just an appreciation of where we're at right now. And with so many youngsters in the team, it's the experience that they've gained from this year to take that into the next year. Certain games which we've lost, like know why we've lost those games. Certain games we've won, know why we've won those games. And I think if you can have a team and a squad where people have a true understanding of what is required to win matches. I think you inevitably you end up winning more. Very rarely do you find a team full of rookies or novices that do well consistently year in, year out. You know, you just you gain, as I say, little bits of experience, understand why this team is successful, understand why that team's successful, and then try and aspire to be one of those teams. And I, to be honest, I don't think we're a million miles away from that because when I came at the end of last season, um, 
I felt like we needed more of that, and I think we gained that going into this year, and as a consequence, I felt like we were a better team. A lot of the young guys are kind of like in their second year, second MLS year. In your experience, um, being at one time a younger player, not that you're old or anything. Well, you've said it, but sure, I yeah. <laughs> you said it. Um, how many years in, in, in a league or of a professional experience did you feel like you had or needed to have for you to feel like, you know, kind of that you were playing consistently and that you no longer look at yourself as like a young player, that kind of thing? You, to be honest, I don't think you ever really look at yourself as a young player. I think other people look at you as that and they look at that based on mistakes which you might make, whether it's in training, whether it's just general preparation or, or whether it's in games. But for some people, they can, um, to go back to my academy days, I remember one my, vividly one of my coaches said, across the, uh, along the, the next few years, you'll play so many games and you do so many training sessions. And if you make a mistake and somebody tells you about the mistake, the people who stay at the top are the ones who learn from the mistake straight away. Whereas there are other people who will make the same mistake over and over and over and over and the more times you do that the lower the standard of player or um, division and stuff that you're playing so for a youngster you could be 17 years old play one season in, in the MLS and gain about as much knowledge as someone who could be 25 26 years of age and play miles ahead of your age so for me I wouldn't necessarily put a time frame on it I think it's just about the player and their understanding of, of the game itself and I think within this group here as I saw throughout the year myself people were picking up on what was going right, what was going wrong, to the point where going into the end of the season, I felt like we weren't really making the same mistakes we were making at the start of the year or the year before. As long as uh, I've been around the league, covered MLS, it's, it's, the theme is always the same. You get results at home, and it's hard to win on the road. Like I don't know if it's so ingrained that that's just the culture of soccer in this country. I'm curious, is that how it is? Yeah, that's exactly how it is elsewhere, you know. That's, 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 that's the way people describe it. But myself and a good few other players throughout the years, we always question it and say, why is it the case? Because it's not like the grass is different. You know, the grass is the same. Like, the referees are technically the same. Although they might succumb to greater pressures of, say, 30,000 people shouting at them for every decision. But, you know, it's still 11 v 11. But I think one thing that's consistent throughout the years is that that concept may exist in people's minds, but the most successful teams do it home and away. Yeah, so there is there are examples every year which show that it's not really a thing, and it's just about breaking that cycle and just maybe just having a different approach to away games instead of people in the back of their mind thinking you know it would be good if we managed to get a draw here. The teams at the top they go wherever they play at home or away, could play on Mars if they wanted to. They're going to approach it the same way and go out and try and get a win. And I think that's probably one of the biggest reasons why that idea exists because some certain teams then think that when they go away from home they're not going to get a result. Um, I think it's, it's, a tr it's a tricky question that one because at home we just feel very very strong we're very very comfortable there so anything other than that you would think has been arguably a bit more negative but it wasn't necessarily a case of it being a negative approach when we were away from home we were just judging things a bit differently because the home side would be like we were and they'd be incredibly confident so they'd come at you in a different way so you have to appreciate the fact that they're going to come all guns blazing with a crowd behind them. And, you know, that that psychological factor is a thing. But as the season progressed and, and um, I think we proved to ourselves that we are hard to beat, going away from home didn't really, it didn't really phase us at all, whether we were playing in front of 70,000 or 7,000 or whatever. It made no difference. Where, whenever we stepped on the field, whether it was here or anywhere else in the States, we were confident we could get a result. Into a situation a player thinks about? Um, I think it's player to player, to be honest. But I think the way that the club is and the way that the players are, if someone decides to come in here, they're not coming in here solely for a coach. They're coming here to play with this team, to play in this stadium, to play in this area. And I think we have that identity now. So even though the coaches may change or they may not change, the identity of the football club remains the same. 
and I think that is a real strength of ours and anyone that comes in as I say it could be Freddie's best friend or it could be a new coach's best friend or whatever it makes no difference you have to buy into the way that we are as a team here you know we are as the saying goes we are stronger together and as I say it doesn't for me it wouldn't matter it wouldn't necessarily matter with the coaches because I'd be buying into the philosophy and, and the place itself Um, I think leading by example is the, is the first thing, really. Obviously, I've, I've not been perfect in my career, but I've, yeah, there's one occasion like 10 years ago, maybe. But overall, I've been lucky enough to work with some real elite level professionals and players and seeing how there was a guy who I played with once and he had his first injury at 31 years of age and he was injured for one week and he was like breaking down because he said, oh, I can't believe I'm injured. But to, the bigger thing for me was to look at the way that he looked after himself. Obviously, people will get injured. They, you know, it's, a, it's a physical sport and so on. But when you see good examples on and off the field, you know, you take energy from, you can take something from that. And I think for me, as a player, if I can provide information and help and whatever to boost someone else's career, that brings me more joy than me achieving something myself because I like to think that say the career that I've had has been due to the people who came before me who helped me get to this point and now I'm in a situation where I've gained all that information and there's more now which I've learnt myself why not help out the younger people you, you know you can be in a situation where it's a really really selfish game but I've never seen it that way and I think it's all about the people you enjoy you enjoy seeing good people do well and to be in a, in a place where I think everyone's essentially a good person. You try and help, you try and keep people going. And you know, it's 11, 11 people start a game, you've got a squad of like 28, 30 people. So it's hard because you don't always get the opportunities you deserve. But it doesn't mean the opportunity is not going to come. And I think when everyone, as I've, I said this to Freddie in my exit meeting today, one of the great things about this place is that when we do well, everyone's happy, even if they're not involved. You know, when we score a goal in the second half at home, all the people on the bench come flying over. We all run to the bench. People from elsewhere, everyone wants to come be involved. And that is through basically sitting and making sure that there's no one separate to the group. The group is, you know, it's the most important thing. And if people feel they're not part of it, then, you know, it's, it's my job and other people's job to change that because they definitely are. And when they do feel part of it, I think we, we train better, we play better, and we enjoy our work a lot more. Oh, I'd absolutely love to see it. I think I think Freddie did very well, and he did that with the coaching staff as well. And he's he's a he's a good guy, which people were very very happy to play for. Not because he was soft or anything like this, but because he he gives you confidence. He doesn't stress on the sideline, doesn't stress in training, but he's planned it all out. This is what the training session is going to be. This is what our game's going, the game plan is going to be, and there's a clear passage from what he wants it to be to teach us how it's supposed to be to us going out in the game and doing it because you believe in it. So as I say, I hope he, um, I hope he does get the job. But just him as a person, I think at the time when there was a lot of change, he was still consistent with it, as was the case with other coaches within the within the rank as well. It wasn't a complete overhaul where we brought in five, six new faces and we tried to learn something new because then. You, you know, learning a new system halfway through a season isn't great. But Freddie just advanced on a system which we had before, made a few tweaks and made it um, really, ma really made it work. He brought everyone together further and just reminded us of what our vision was. Obviously, you know, we didn't reach MLS Cup or anything like that, but 
we pushed on, we pushed on. We won the games we needed to win. We made it to the final, to um, to the playoffs. We won a playoff game. Hopefully, you know, we were probably one good half away from being in the next round. So, yeah, I think Fed did well.